Welcome back. Yeah, the reaction to the word could be allergic. Well, speaking of words, David, you know, um, you've given us all sorts of surprises with words and the, the background to them uh, over the weeks and months of this show, but yeah. even you sometimes are taken by surprise by the background to a word. Yeah, Richard, I was genuinely gobsmacked when I looked at the origins of this particular word. It's a common word and it's gun. Now, I sort of was just looking around to see what the uh, backstory was and I discovered that it actually relates to a Scandinavian girl called Gunhilda. And Gunhilda is, if you break it down in Old Norse, Gun means war and Hilda also means war. So, so is, it, is it actually unusual to have a female name related to a weapon or the theme of a weapon? It's not, and that's the other thing that I also discovered, because Gunhilda was the nickname that uh, the Old Norse uh, used in the Middle Ages for a uh, catapult uh, that would sort of hurl large stones and things during a siege standoff. And, uh, in fact, it was shortened to Gun, uh, which gives us the word for gun, because uh, if you look back at the history of warfare, there's actually many weapons that were named after uh, females. For example, there was a large cannon in World War I called uh, Big Bertha, there was a musket in the 1800s uh, used by the British Army called Brown Bess. And there's even a cannon that sits up on uh, Embra uh, Castle there in Embra called Mons Meg. So it uh, did strike me that as unusual, as well as the backstory itself. And I was trying to think, well, here's a, a woman's name that is actually war beside war. Is there an equivalent in English? Um, and the closest I could come up with was Bernadette because there is burn and there is a debt and there are two things that hurt. But I don't think we'd ever name a gun after Bernadette. But there you go, a, a really surprising story just lurking in the dictionary. It is a really surprising story. You heard it first. <laughs> Thank you, David. Pleasure. Toby is on six and Sean is on 23 in this last of our quarterfinals tonight. And uh, more letters this time, Sean, from you. Can I get a consonant, please? Thank you. M. And another? And a vowel, please. U. And another vowel. E. And a consonant, please. F. And another consonant. L. And another consonant. R. And a vowel, please. I. And a consonant, please. And last letter, G. Here's our 30 seconds. Sean said film is because uh, I saw the potential of this uh, as a, uh, a suggestion and I've dived here straight away Richard and film is here only as, uh, as its own entry. There's no um, run on or separate entry for filmer. So I'm afraid Sean it's a, it's a no to that. Figures, figures for seven and uh, just keeping with the uh, sporting theme, there was luge for four, but obviously seven is a far more satisfying outcome. <laughs> so we've got that little sporting theme continuing <laughs> in there. Well found, David. But uh, nice score for Toby, seven points. Well, Toby, David managed to find luge in that little mix, so we do have a little bit of a, a sporting continuity. But uh, what would you like this time around? I'll play on and uh, take a consonant, please. Thanks, Toby. And? And another consonant, please. R. A third consonant. Q. And I'll get a fourth consonant. N. And a vowel, please. O. Another vowel. I. And another vowel. E. And I'll get a consonant, please. L. And another vowel, please. And last letter, A. Time to think.
would have enjoyed that cue without the U turning up, but uh, how many did you get? I had a safe six. Sean? A uh, six. Well, let's, uh, <laughs> let's discover whether yours is safe or not. What was yours, Sean? Lona. Could you spell it? Just to double check. Uh, L-O-A-N-E-R. Thank you. And Toby? Lona. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's hope it is safe for everybody. Would you just verify you've got the same word there? Uh, what do you think, David? Are they safe? <laughs> Two loners keeping their own company. Uh, look, it's a good six, and in fact, difficult with that cue there. Uh, just keeping with the sporting theme, Richard, there is iron, of course, and an inner, which is the inside glove of a wicketkeeper. Also, it's the uh, inside ring around a bullseye. So that's also there for five. But the seven there is aileron, a word we've had on a few occasions, A-I-L-E-R-O-N. It's essentially the wing flap. Very nicely found, David. But uh, Toby and Sean... Both scored six. Well, there are ten points between them now, and of course, ten points up for grabs in our next numbers game. Now, Sean, um, what was your favourite combination? Did you have a favourite? No, I think I tried everything at least once and still didn't end up with a favourite, to be honest. <laughs> well, that sounds like a fine philosophy of life anyway. Try everything once. <laughs> what would you like tonight? I think tonight I'd like to try uh, four large, two small. Please. Four large and two small. Thanks, Sean. And the two small numbers are 10 and 2, and the four large are 75, 50, 25, and 100. And the target to reach is 189. We're heading there. Sean, you tried that heavyweight mix tonight. Did you like it? I think I got there in the nick of time. Okay, very exciting. Toby? One away, 190. Bad luck, just so close. But, uh, Sean, what did you do? All right, let's see if this pans out. Uh, uh, 100 plus 75 plus 10 for 185. Plus 10 is 185. Uh, to get the 4, I did 50 divided by 25. 50 divided by 25 is 2. two. Times or add the other two. Add the other two is 189. Well done. You have got there. That was uh, a very nice method of being, Sean. Well done. Sean got there in the nick of time, Lily. Um, how did you go? I use the same method, but well done, Sean. Yeah, very nice approach indeed, and uh, a very important 10 points. So, Toby on 19, Sean on 39 as we head for our next break. And interestingly, in our next word mix is a word which David found a little earlier. Fend and then luge. <laughs> and the clue, this time, swallowed up. See you soon.